In our scripture stories, so many people gathered around Jesus as his reputation became known from town to town to town as he traveled. As we gather, virtually or physically, we too are yearning for presence and for peace and for help. Welcome to worship for February 21st, 2021, here at Northminster United Church. Our Christ candle is lit to focus our hearts and minds on this time together and to guide us as we seek to deepen our love for God and share it more fully with the world. Because it is the first Sunday of Lent, we are celebrating communion today. So if you have a moment, grab something that will represent the bread and the cup for you. Maybe uh, some bread or a cracker, maybe some juice. So just whatever it is that you will have on hand to share in the meal together. We also, as we begin worship, pause in a moment of gratitude giving thanks that we live, work, worship, and play on Treaty 7 land. Let us worship. Each of us is created as precious and a holy vessel of embodied love. We've been through so much since this time last Lent that in many ways we feel a sense that we've been shattered. Our, our wholeness is not what it was when we think of body, mind, and spirit. It's almost like that glass vessel which has been broken into pieces. So let us enter into Lent as a season of recovery or healing as we focus on Jesus, the healer of our every ill. glass like we have here begins as something that was whole and yet discarded and as it tumbled by the sea it is broken and polished into something that then becomes treasured we do not embrace in our church in our beliefs we do not embrace suffering as being necessary nor do we believe suffering is something that is given by God it isn't. But instead, we believe that suffering is part of life. And so when pain comes and when brokenness enters our lives, Jesus reaches out to touch and remind us of the treasure that we all are, that we are worthy of new life in the midst of hopelessness. And in a year when pandemic has wreaked havoc on our world, we begin by affirming our journey to physical health. invite you now to join me in an opening prayer with a moment for confession. Lent developed uh, into a season of, of intense inward reflection, and confession was a part of that centuries after the life of Jesus. Yet as we will see, Jesus encouraged people to open up about their lives, to speak truth no matter how broken. 
This is the beginning of compassion for ourselves and for others. To do this, we acknowledge our need to restore our own holy vessels. Let's pray. Creator God, we are bodies fashioned by your hand in your own image, shapes and colors of diverse and immense beauty. And yet too often we have ignored that sacred nature of our physical lives. The holy vessels that you have fashioned are tired and suffering, sometimes feeling ravaged by months of disrupted rhythms and ailment. Our fragility, God, has come into full view and we are frightened and we cannot fathom the portions or the proportions of loss and so we look away, sometimes even from our own needs. Help us, healer, show us our own strength. Forgive our inertia. Move us to move one step at a time toward greater care. this. God's love and God's grace surrounds you, no matter what. You are a precious and holy vessel right now, and Christ's light is a treasure fully given for you and for me and for all. So take a deep breath. Breathe in to let this truth fill you and breathe out with that relief of assurance. Amen. We're going to offer a passing of the peace to one another in this time. And as we do that, I invite you to imagine the warmth, a warmth of God or Christ's light, whatever it is, but imagine a warmth that surrounds you, extending then to those from you to others who might be in close proximity to you today. Imagine it extending as well to beyond your walls, to the neighborhood, to the wider community, to the church, and imagine that warmth, um, see it uh, spread like the rising sun. Let it expand to all the world as you say the words, peace be with you. Let's sing. Tomorrow, 
We're going to share together in an activity this morning. And so here's what I'm going to do, and I'd love for you to try it as well. So what I have here is just a sheet of white paper, plain on both sides. And I would like you, when you do this, to think about all the hurts, the hurts, the things that hurt, um, that don't make you feel like you used to feel before all of this terrible year started for us. And as you're thinking about those things, I want you to write them down on this piece of paper. So, for example, they could be things like maybe you're feeling sadness because you're missing out on family activities or concerts you love to go to, sports games, um, spending time with friends. So, so I'm going to write sadness on this one. Or maybe you're feeling... Maybe you're just feeling a lot of frustration because we have to do so many things virtually right now and we can't do things together in person. So I'm going to write down frustrations on mine. Or maybe because of everything going on, you feel like it's just, well, it's just not fair. So not fair. I'm going to write those words. But I'm sure you're going to think of lots of other things you're feeling or lots of other situations that are making you feel hurt um, in, in different ways right now. So as you think about those things, I've got mine written on my paper. I'm not gonna ball this whole piece of paper up. Just like that. Big ball, nice and tight. Squish everything that you wrote on your piece of paper into this ball. Now I'm gonna open it back up. I'm gonna do my best to spread it out and make it a flat piece of paper again. Let's see, see if I can do this. And now I think I'm going to take my paper and I'm just going to rip it in half. There. My words are now in half. My paper, I've tried to make it flat again, but I'm not doing too great a job at this. But you know what I might do now? I'm going to try and tape my paper back together. Got my tape here. Let's see what I can do. If I can, if I can tape my sheet of paper back together. Someone said this was like quilting. Why would you cut fabric into hundreds of little pieces just to then sew them all back together again? But that's, that's what I'm doing today. I'm ripping up my paper and I'm gonna tape it back together. There, so, well look at that, what do you think? It's kind of a mess, isn't it? <laughs> it's wrinkly, it's bumpy, I can still read it. But I have sadness, frustration, not fair. I can still read it but barely, the words are just barely on there. And some of them I even ripped in half when I tore it apart. So what else, what now? Are we stuck with this piece of paper? Are we just going to leave it? No, not at all. We are going to do something else that is so important in our healing, in our own healing, when we're trying to recover from our hurts. What do we do? We turn the page. Now look at that, there's an empty page here in front of us. Does turning the page mean our hurts never happened? No, not at all. And look at this, it's just a new page. Is it perfect? Nope, and it doesn't have to be perfect. But it's a new start. It's a new chance to take what we have and create something meaningful, maybe even something beautiful. So maybe I can draw something beautiful because I think this says to me that God doesn't throw things away, that the power of God's love 
transforms. We took this ripped up, scrunched up piece of paper, which represented our own hurts. What else can I draw? And we turned it still into something beautiful. And that doesn't mean our hurts were any less real. And it doesn't mean they were any, or it doesn't mean they're even easy to overcome because sometimes our hurts really last. But it does mean that we have inside of us what God placed there from the very beginning, and that is the ability to heal. So there's my something beautiful, my flower and my butterfly in my heart on the back of our page when I had a fresh start and to try to do something new with our ripped up, scrunched up piece of paper. So let's end our, our conversation this morning with a moment of prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, we come to you with our our hearts, you can place your hand over your heart, with our hands, our minds, and our souls. And we do this in need of your healing touch. Heal us from the inside out, take a big breath, so that we may reach out to help your world in need. Amen. Listen to these words of scripture for the first Sunday of Lent from Matthew 8, verses 1 to 4 and 16 and 17. When Jesus had come down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And there was a leper who came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately his leprosy had been cleansed. Then Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. That evening they brought to him many who were possessed with demons, and he cast out the spirits with a word and cured all who were sick. It was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took our infirmaries and bore our diseases. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. It's not hard to think of a time when you felt left out of a group. Like you felt like you did not belong. You felt like you were not good enough. What can we feel then some level of compassion, or we can feel some level of compassion with the man in our scripture who had that leprosy. But I imagine not many of us have actually gone through something so dramatic as to be completely socially exiled, like he would have been, and then to be physically healed, and then to go right back and integrate into that community that for so long had, feel, that had feared him and, and shunned him and, and, 
And I just can't imagine doing that. But he did that. He went back to the place that had once shunned him and felt fearful towards him. Right off the bat, I can think of a couple of examples in our current culture, current day examples, not exactly the same, but very similar. Those, for example, in the LGBTQ community who have been so terribly hurt by Christianity over the years. Or our First Nations brothers and sisters who've been, um, who lived through, some many didn't, but who lived through residential schools and that system. Those are just two examples I can think of. Many people in those communities never did return to uh, faith community, to Christianity after that. I understand that, but others do. And so I, I imagine them, like the man with leprosy, having been shunned and yet returned to that place that they still want so very much valued. These people all beautifully made, those in our scripture, those in our faith community and in our families and homes and community today, all these people in our midst who are all so beautifully made and part of God's creation, uh, seeking healing and, and wholeness and community and reconciliation. So can you imagine then why this man in our scripture would want to go back to that temple. The worship com worshiping community, despite its shortcomings, must have offered something to this child of God that they could not find any other place. How about you? What kind of hope and healing do you come to religion seeking? Because we all come through these doors for different reasons. That's a really important question. What are you hoping for or what are you seeking healing from when you come to worship? If you think back to another story from a few weeks ago, when Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law, he's not only making her well physically, Remember, it says she got up after her, her illness and began to serve them immediately, it said. He not only makes her well physically, he also restores her to her community. She is then able to play an important role offering hospitality to honored guests, is what the story says. She has a place, again, and serves her, her purpose, her calling, so maybe that's what so many of us crave. We're craving purpose, and we're craving belonging and a place. We need a place. The same is true for all of those. Um, the same is true for though it, it, those it says in our scripture who are possessed, is the phrase it uses. Um, that's what the scripture says. Whatever that word possessed might be, mean for us in today's language, um, I don't know, what do you think that means? For me, I imagine maybe... It's someone who's struggling, who's really overcome, uh, just so enwrapped by a physical illness. Or maybe it's someone who just has such an obsession about something in particular that it's taking over and getting in their way of having quality of life. Or maybe possessed in that context means for us someone with mental illness, because then there would have been no other way to describe it, like we have um, understanding now. Whatever it might have been that caused someone in that moment, in that text, in that scripture, in that story, for someone to not have balance in their life or to not have self-control, that often as well results in a loss of their community. But Jesus, Matthew tells us, heals all who come to him. He names some of those illnesses in particular today. Again, the woman um, who had a fever, who robbed her of being in her place in community, or a demon possession, which breaks all bonds of human fellowship, or someone with a terrible skin condition. All of which makes me think that perhaps Matthew is trying to tell us something. Perhaps Matthew is promising that Jesus doesn't only heal in a sense of making well, 
but also he, he heals in the sense of making us whole. So not just well, but whole. Jesus comes, yes, to care for physical needs and for emotional and community needs as well, because that matters to us, doesn't it? As we consider the year we've been through and the pain we're experiencing because of isolation or, or loss of community, missing our families and the chance to connect with people who matter to us, we don't just want to be well, we want to be whole. And we've learned that that's a hard thing to do when we are without our people and that without our community. As the leper begs Jesus for help, remember what he says. He says, if you choose, he says, you can make me clean. That's what he says to Jesus. If you choose, you can make me clean. That's a real expression of need and trust. And, and Jesus responds. I wonder if this is the attitude that Matthew is inviting all of Jesus' disciples to take. Because Jesus had spent considerable time teaching his disciples about the nature of God's coming kingdom, about their need to trust God, about the character of those who, who are following him. And so maybe in this story, we see Matthew now following up on Jesus' teaching about discipleship with someone who's actually modeling exactly what he taught. This leper was an outcast. Lepers weren't typically the kind of people that you'd look for as being a good role model. Actually, lepers, lepers weren't typically people you even wanted to look at at all. Rather, you avoided them at all costs. And so perhaps Matthew also invites us to recalculate how we see and value others. For it's this one in particular who models discipleship. It's this one who Jesus heals. It's this one who is drawn back into community and lives a life of faith. This text also invites us to think about, I think, what our church does. You know, what, what does our church offer to those in pain? Is pain a taboo thing and we ignore it at all costs? I don't think that so at all. But what is it that our church offers? It's a good time to take a bit of an inventory on things like this. What does our church offer to those who are seeking healing and touch? How are we reaching out to people in pain? Are we acknowledging people's suffering in, our, in preaching? Are we acknowledging it in, in worship, in what we do? How are we promoting physical health, because that's sort of the focus of these, this text today. It was physical health and healing people were seeking. So how are we promoting physical health and wholeness and healing? Jesus' touch of the leper, it was considered an outrageous act. And by doing it, he signaled that these people were not outside of God's kingdom, nor outside of the love of community itself. They are family worthy of touch and inclusion. This text also asks us to consider the ways that our community excludes others, the barriers we create, the barriers then we break down. That sounds a lot like the affirming ministries conversations we are having, doesn't it? That what are we doing in our conversations in our church? What are we doing to make sure there are no, bound, no barriers, no boundaries, no barriers to full participation in the life of our Northminster community? Jesus crosses social boundaries in every way imaginable. Jesus teaches that the boundaries that we thought were helping us might actually be hurting us and hurting others. We have to look around our church and ask, Who's missing? That's a really important question. Who is missing? Who isn't at Northminster? Who, has, who hasn't been to our church? And why is that? Why is that? So how are we and what are we doing to include or exclude people who perhaps long to belong? So back to that beach glass, that anchor image, which you're going to see all through the season of Lent. It begins with something that was once whole 
and then discarded. And then it's tumbled in the sea and it becomes this beautiful, precious treasure and gem that people search for when they're at the beach. And, and Jesus is like that. Jesus reminds us that we too are like that treasure gem. And in a year when the world has wreaked havoc on us, when there's been this pandemic and we're feeling kind of broken at times, may that beach glass be that reminder for us that we are on a journey together toward healing. As we do so, we always remember the good news of our faith, of wholeness after brokenness and a rainbow after the storm and resurrection and life after death. We are all treasured by God. We are all beautiful. We all belong. How can we make sure that all people feel this deeply? Amen. Let's sing. This is our liturgy of the table, our communion meal of remembering the meal that, that Jesus had with his disciples, with his friends that last night. If you have, again, something you can have, uh, something that represents the bread and the cup for you, please do grab those now if you don't have them already. And also, this is the time in our service where we're going to share our prayers. And so if you have any prayers to name, please type them into the comment section that as we feast together in community, we also hold the prayers of our community and lift them to God together. God is with you. Let us lift up our hearts to God, giving thanks to our sovereign God, for it is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere giving thanks to you, God. In the beginning, you breathed life into raw materials, creating and animating containers of beauty and goodness. We, your holy vessels, were fired in the kiln of love until we shined with your light. Susceptible to shattering, we find ourselves broken, unable at times to remember your promise of repair. You remind us time and time again that though broken, we are held in your presence and made whole by your grace. 
holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, holy vessel of divine presence on earth. Your Spirit anointed him as a container of grace in the form of preaching good news to the poor and proclaiming release for the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, setting at liberty those who are oppressed, and announcing that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with those considered too broken for company. By the baptism of his suffering and death, and resurrection, you gave birth to the path of healing and recovery, delivered us from our despair and isolation, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When Jesus rose from death, he promised to be with us always. In the power of your word and Holy Spirit, we are not alone. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he gave thanks. And he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then when the supper was over, he took the cup And he gave thanks to you, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my love poured out for you and for many. Do this, and as often as you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. And in remembrance of this healing, life-transforming acts that we remember of Jesus Christ we offer ourselves in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us your healing spirit through Christ so that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, healing agents in a broken world, offering hope and one with each other. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory are yours, healing God now and forever. the bread of life. Thanks be to God. The cup of blessing. Thanks be to God. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us share in this bread and this cup. Whatever it is that you may have with you, may it represent for you Christ's healing presence in your life. Let us partake. As we share in this time, let us share our prayers, which people are are offering and lifting together. A prayer from Suzanne, um, continued prayers for her sister Marie, who is recovering from her hip surgery. A prayer from Marcy, a request for our brothers and sisters in Texas, especially the poor who are suffering so terribly from the cold. A prayer from Tracy, prayer of thanks for our children and youth who join us for Kids Zone. 
Barb is asking for prayers for all who seek healing. From Ron and Joanne, prayers for baby Sophia and her parents as she had a setback yesterday with a cardiac arrest. A prayer from Enoch for those who are suffering from depression. Jan is asking for prayers for the elders in our midst whose lives have been made so much more difficult by the isolation of these COVID months. And a prayer request from Margaret. Prayers for her friend Cindy, who is waiting for a live liver donor. Prayers for her friend Candace, who, have been given, who has been given a year to live as her cancer is no longer treatable. Let us gather all of these prayers together. Prayers which have been spoken, prayers we hold in our hearts. And as we end in this meal, let us share together in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're going to be sharing in something together every week um, as part of Lent. It's called a ritual um, a ritual action for the week. And this is why we've been inviting you especially to have your beach glass on hand. Many of you probably have some around the house. Many of you have picked some up from the church. If you haven't yet, you can still come and get some. We have a lot we love to share with you. The words we heard today in this week's healing story were, remember those words again, that when the leper asked, he says, I do choose. And then Jesus says, be made clean. So I invite you to take your beach glass and to look at it closely and Notice the worn edges and notice its color and feel its thickness and its texture. And just take a moment when you can to examine it as this completely unique treasure, which is one of a kind. And of course it really is. And so then I want you to shift your own thinking, shift your thinking to your own rough edges. What broken edges in your life need, need help? What will you do in this Lenten season to focus on your healing of body, mind, and spirit? So now enclose that beach glass in your hand and hold it to your heart. Take a deep breath. And as you do that deep breathing, just invite the spirit to live and move in you in a special way over the next six weeks of Lent. And, and keep this piece of glass every week. Keep it close at hand, maybe on your desk or your nightstand or in your pocket, just wherever you will see it regularly. So may that be our, our ritual for this week, to, to hold it and to ask what are our own rough edges that need God's healing this season. Amen. It is our offering time where we pause and say thank you to God and and ask God to bless our financial gifts and the many ways we give in faith and in hope to Northminster United Church. Let's pray and bless our gifts. For the gifts, God, of those who walk this path alongside us, for the way in which these offerings will become our presence with others. For the gift of this community, bound and working together, we give thanks and ask your blessing. Amen. So now we move into our offering time, or I'm sorry, our announcement time to um, 
almost draw our worship time to a close. Again, we have our Friday emails from the office. Please read through all of them. There's so much going on, and you do have to scroll quite a ways down, but take the time to read them. Um, make note of them. Invite others to join us in these many events going on. I'll highlight first, of course, that we have coffee every Sunday after church on Zoom. If you don't have the recurring Zoom link, it's the same one every week. Don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, as part of today's coffee, we have the task force joining us. It's not an official meeting, but it's a conversation. They're going to share some ideas and would love your feedback. So, so join us for coffee at 11.30 today and, and hear what they have to offer. Um, I have one copy left of our Queer Virtue book for the Lent study, which starts tomorrow night. The book is $20 if you can pay for that. If not, we're happy just to share, but um, reach out to me right away and I'll make sure you can get that book and you can join in on this very interesting book study for the season. Supper for the Soul is this Thursday night on Zoom. Again, sign up and get the link from the office. We have um, Maureen joining us who is a counselor and she'll be sharing some ideas for us about how we care for ourselves mentally in this time. So six o'clock for just conversation and 6.30 Maureen will be starting with us and enjoy, enjoy that evening with us on Thursday night. All are welcome. Kid Zone movie is this Saturday afternoon. Um, let Marianne know if you plan to attend and she'll make sure you get the movie link for Saturday afternoon. And otherwise, I'd say just read your reports. Make sure you know that annual reports and newsletter is due on the 26th. So if you're part of a committee, a group, a club, an organization of some part of Northminster, those are deadlines you need to be aware of. And let's now move to our blessing. Go now with confidence as treasures of God, recovering your depth of love for all and our joy of living in this world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears that I do choose you. And may the Spirit hover and move and deliver salve to your soul and a spring in your step. Amen. Thanks so much for being here. We'll see you again soon. And let's now go out singing. Bye for now. Vessels holy and whole
out a star hold on to the end valley mountain there is a fountain washes our tears all away worlds are swaying someone is praying please let us come home to Through to